today I think I want to focus on more automation, which is meaning we're going to need to get into some more power as well, or ways to transfer powers because Ender IO doesn't really work very well with our current wireless um, power. So what I want to do is I want to still use this right here, but I want to kind of switch over into flux networks if we can get into it. We should have totally enough ender pearls and obsidian to be able to do that. Um, but right here, I have an alloy smelter, another one, and I have sag meal. I do need to put nodes in them. I went ahead and made a couple more. And uh, over here, I went ahead and added um, some more molecular assemblers up to the top. And uh, we still have another ME interface. I can put more ME interfaces up to the top as these do not currently use uh, the channels, right? Is the, uh, the molecular assemblers do not use the channels. So they just need power. The interfaces do need channels. Um, so right currently we have four and then I just need to put uh, some more molecular assemblers or some more ME interfaces, sorry, on the top. And then we would basically have a full eight channels used. And that would be what I would call my interface stack. Or at least that's the way I like to set it up. I like the way these look. Um, same goes for the uh, the processor here. So let's go ahead and get this Flux Network stuff started. Um, Flux Networks is really, really nice, and I'm glad it's in this. So Flux Networks allows you to have configurable networks, and the mod's been updated since um, I have uh, messed around with this. So attained by compressing redstone with bedrock and obsidian. So this used to be done, so this is a little bit different now. Obsidian, left click, bedrock, okay. What, drop redstone? Obsidian at Y level two, left click, and it drops it on the, okay. All right, so there's a little bit of a different mechanic. It used to be that you would light redstone on fire, uh, but it seems that uh, Fluix has been changed, or Flux have been changed, I don't know why I said Fluix. Um, so let's try this out. So it's an obsidian above it, an air block, we put that there, and then we have bedrock at the bottom, right? So obsidian, take some of that, um, and redstone. I'm also going to grab, I'm going to have to go mining for a little bit more redstone and obsidian. Um, I need water, a bucket of water. We still have our copy of the contract. You know, I'll just drink the milk and we'll call it good, right? All right, let's go down in our mine and get this set up. So this should be a perfect place. Let's see if our night vision, oh man, our night vision is awful when that's on. But anyways, um, we should have plenty more. I need to grab this too. This was our animation setup. It does work pretty well. Um, and let's just look here. I think this will be a good good place. It says Y level two. Do I have to find a spot that is Y level two? Because that would be quite difficult. Like that might not work out so well. So let's see if this works, right? As long as there, so we place the obsidian. Let's go ahead and place, let's place the obsidian. Throw the item. Oh no, it's going to go into the auto, it's going to the collector, isn't it? Go ahead and take this for a second. And let's try this. So I'm going to throw a stack down there. And it says right click. Well, at least that's what it says. Right? This is a new mechanic that I'm, I got to get used to. Um, so left click. So punch it. Oh! Okay, that actually, that worked perfect. <laughs> Does the same thing work for these blocks? Uh, it's not these blocks. There used to be blocks of, uh, or you take redstone and turn it into that. I guess not. So, well, that's good to know. That's an interesting mechanic. I was, uh, I'm so used to the old version where you would just light it on fire or throw it in lava, vice versa. <laughs> All right, that makes automation a little bit different for that. So let's go ahead and get into this Flux Networks. Let's dive in. I'm gonna make, uh, about a, I guess, two stacks if I can. All right, before we run out a little bit of power. Go ahead and grab that. I need to make a couple of blocks, because the thing, the, I wanna make a couple of things. I wanna make a Flux Point and a Flux Plug. The plug is gonna allow us to put an energy into the network, and then a Flux Controller, which is even nicer. I'm gonna need one, two, three, four, five. Five blocks of these. I think I need another block for the main bit here, the uh, the actual plug. And then we just use this. Let's go ahead and make the plug. We'll make the controller. And then we have the ability to make a point, which is going to allow us to move power around. I actually need two of these um, because that's how we're going to power those two machines that we got. Also, 
Ender IO, let's go ahead and grab one of these that looks good. This one's a good one. And what about this? This one's probably the best. It's three. Yeah, this one's definitely better. Um, and let's go ahead and get these set up. So I want to take our power now. And I guess I can go ahead and tap this side. Now, the max transfer rate on this bad boy is going to be changed. Looks like I need my hammer. Not hammer. Where's my bag? There it is. It's in my bag. The, my crescent hammer. I want to make sure this is not connected there. That is no good. And I think that might go away. Don't know. Well, let's go ahead and set up our network. We're going to create a new network. And uh, this being just my own setup, I'm going to call this main for right now. It's going to be our main power network. And red. I'm going to set this to green as input. And go ahead and create it. It should be set to public for me, being that I'm playing on a... Uh, single player world um, and then it'll just make life easier and then you go ahead and select it and now we can see that we now have power going into it or we will once we have somewhere for power to go um, and then I can go ahead and make a flex controller and we can honestly place this anywhere um, let's think of a good place even right here is probably a good idea and we'll set this to main and we'll go ahead and change this up a little bit so we do have wireless charging that we can enable and what this will let me do is charge all of my inventory slots. It'll just allow me to charge anything. So if stuff required power, like my armor or my bow, it immediately gets charged back up. So let me shoot some arrows through here. And what should happen is this should get charged right back up, or at least it's supposed to, depending on whatever, I guess, I don't know why this is says disabled. Oh, main inventory is disabled? Huh. So I guess only your things on your hotbar, which does seem to be disabled as well. Does that mean all wireless charging is disabled? Main inventory is disabled. Right hands. I don't actually know. Inventory definitely is disabled. If that's disabled, that would be... Why even have flux networks? I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> So let's go ahead and take these. Um, there's another thing that I also want to make that's going to make my life a little bit easier. And that is making the flux configurator. This thing is really handy, especially when you start working with more and more points. You do not want to have to configure each time you place it. So let's go ahead and just for the sake of it, I'm going to place this back here. And right now, I'm going to go ahead and set it up. We'll just select main and it's good to go. I'm going to shift right click on here and that's going to save this and we can go back here, place it, and then I can just hit it again and bam, it's ready to go. So we don't have to sit there and open the, uh, the menu and configure things and do all that. So we can just let it do its thing. All right. So what I want to do is I want to get automation going to the sag mill and over here to the alloy smelter. That's the whole goal. And, uh, I think I want to do thermal, thermal machines as well. Thermal is going to be like for really fast processing. So I'm going to have uh, a system basically set up where we have material coming in like this. And I want material to be going out and going into our system um, or something like that. Or going into some storage drawers, going into something that can store these items. But for right now, this is going to be for our alloys. This right here is going to be for anything that needs to be processed for right now. Um, not too much will be used for this, but if there are special things that will need to be used, this is the perfect machine for it. And this also works as well. All right, so let's get this bad boy set up. So for this setup, let's go ahead and expand our controller. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of controller blocks here. And this just sticking down gives us multiple channels. We actually have a channel that will come here, here. There's 16 on the or 32 on each side. And uh, I think right now, actually, I might just want to go this tall for right now. Um, because we should be able to get this to work. I'm going to run cable to this machine, run cable to this machine, and I'm going to run cable to this wall because actually right here, I'm going to, I'm going to try and set up automated, um, applied energistics processors right here. So we should have the ability to do that. Um, I am going to run this here and this here. Because that'll give us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven channels on this side. Right here, we'll only have one for now and one for this side. So what do I have? I have ME interfaces. 
this is going to get us set up. So what I like to do is for simple setups just like this and or this one or this one, which I just fully upgraded these guys to resonant. Um, let's go ahead and let me show you how I like to set this up. So I, I usually like a buffer chest that just kind of helps with uh, the whole processing setup. And then I'm going to put a interface on each side. And this is going to allow us to have processors or allow us to set the process up in this machine. And it will go in here. If we want to add more later, there is the ability to do that. And we can have them all connected to this chest as our input buffer. Let's go ahead, though. And we should be able to, I think we can use this wrench. And you see how the sides will change? I want to see the arrow pointing down at our chest like this, like this. You see the arrows pointed down and I think we have to turn it like this. There we go. So this means that the items will go into this. I think it might go and try to go in there anyways, um, but just for the sake of it, I like having the, the items automatically go in here. Now what I can also do is I'll set up a conduit that is going to connect to here. And this is going to basically, let's go ahead and set that to extract, turn that off. We'll set this to extract, always active, and insert. That's going to pump it back into the interface because you can actually throw items, like this chest, for example, into the interface and it actually goes back into our system. And that's what we want. That's what we want to complete the auto craft cycle. So there we go. You can use um, like imports, uh, but that's going to use more channels. So I, I vote to go this way. So. No, you can try many different ways. There's so many different ways you can set these things up. Just be creative and do things how you would like to do them. Um, there's also ME uh, conduits, I do believe, in this pack. So conduits. Uh, yeah, we even have gas conduits, which are really nice. That's for um, mechanism. Um, so yeah, we have these, we have dents and we also have ME conduits. So both of those are gonna be great. I, that, I mean, eventually we can replace these if we feel like it. You know, depends on how we want this to work. So the same thing is going to go here. Chest. And let's go ahead and make more chests, right? Oh, as soon as... Get that. There we go. And yes, yeah, same deal for this. Chest here. Chest here. And then, of course, I'm going to route this a little bit differently. You know what? I might actually set this... This one can be set the way I was talking about earlier because these machines allow you to pull the items directly out. I mean, these do too, um, but I'm going to try it this way and see if maybe, you know, there's other ways of doing it. I don't know. I always like experimenting. Go ahead and throw this. There we go. That's down. Down. And then with these machines, we can configure this to be push pull. So that should work. Figure that push pull. And there we go. And just connect it up. Perfect. And uh, that should also put the items back in this inventory. Well, making this automation pretty straightforward. Now, you can also make these smaller if you wanted to. They don't have to be big and bulky like this. And I think you can have four on each side or three. Or Yeah, you can, you can make these smaller and, and place them on walls and stuff. And they can be connected to this cable. But... Right now, this worked perfect. So let's go ahead and set up one of our first processes that is going to allow us to automate our applied logistics with these advanced inscribers and such. So let's go ahead and get this started. Right here, we're gonna set this, let's go ahead and cancel this out. We're gonna set this to processing. And what I want is I want to take one nether quartz and I wanna have it equal one crushed quartz and go ahead and make that a pattern. And then, I want another one, and I think I have it in here. Yes, I do. Where we say, all right, one crushed equals one silicon, right? It could be in the middle, doesn't really matter. Perfect, because this is what we need to get set up so that way we know we have silicon that is started for us. Now I can do this um, in, in this machine or this machine. I think I'm gonna stick with this machine for right now because of how fast this actually is. And we can go ahead and put the crushing pattern, which is this one in here, and the smelting pattern in this one, just like that. Now, all we have to say, 
Let's go ahead. Actually, let me do this while I'm down here because I don't know why I keep going up because I have the interface right here. Feel so derpy by doing that. You guys probably wonder why. But anyways, let's go ahead and see if this works. Let's do quartz or, or actually silicon. And let's craft 10 and start that process. We should see this kick on, hopefully. Oh yeah, well, once we configure this, input, and then set that to auto and set that to extract both and turn that on. Same for this, insert on the top and then output on this side. And then once this is done, that should hopefully start working. All right, and then if we check here, we should end up with that craft. Is this configured properly? Insert, extract, always active. Why did it not go in there? One crush quartz equals silicon, right? Yeah, that's the, uh, that's what it does. Oh, we need to auto input. Okay, there it goes. <laughs> I forgot to turn that on. You guys are probably yelling at me. So those are, those are automated and ready to go. So that is super fast. I could also do it with these machines. These are already configured. I actually made sure to do that. Now it's time to get the other process set up. And that is getting these ready to go. So what I think I want is I want one machine. I want one machine for each process uh, processor to be made. And then I need one machine for all the processing. So that should leave me with four or five. We need five of these processors. So I need five advanced inscribers in order to make this possible. So just to test, I want to make sure that these flux points will actually power this machine. I believe they will. Um, so yes, uh, no, this already had power. This was the existing one. Let's try this one, which currently doesn't have power. It is not wanting to connect. And it will not connect. Um, even though I think there's the ability to change the power, the network status, we can change this to energy units or redstone flux only. I thought energy units would work, but it doesn't seem that doesn't change it. Okay. So these will not connect. So what we need is we need to get some uh, glass cables, basically, and they need to go back here to power these. I don't think these actually need to be hooked directly. Let's go ahead and take a look real quick. You know, I don't know why I'm doing this. But I think we have some glass cable. So what I went ahead and opted for doing um, was just to place an energy acceptor right here. And then I can actually hook this up to the energy acceptor. And then instead of using channels, we can actually take the uh, the ME cable that we have. Let me actually grab more. I think I have cable just a bit more. And this should power all of these, right? So that should be perfectly fine. There we go. Look at that. Fantastic. All of these are going to be powered and uh, we can actually make this look a bit, a little bit neater. So what I need to do now is the, basically the same thing. I'm going to take these interfaces and they're going to be all facing this way. And you can craft these particular looking ones just by taking your ME interface and placing them in here. Um, and this just saves you from needing to configure this way. These will directly go into here regardless. Um, so this should work. I think this one right here is going to pump this. I think this one's the only one that I don't want this way. Um, I think I actually want this one to be in going into a buffer chest. Um, and the buffer chest being a little bit higher up because I think I want a conduit on here. Let's see a chest and you'll understand why here in a little bit. Um, but I want this chest to be here because this is going to be our main processor. And so we're going to be swapping things out all the time and we need to make sure that we have all the resources in here and that includes redstone. Once we have the system panned out, everything should be fine. Um, but this system should function. So let's go ahead and connect these. We probably don't even need this here. And then connect this. There we have a nice looking setup. And uh, up here is where we'll have that other in interface. And now this one can be like that. We just 
need to place it like this into the chest. And then uh, conduit. Did I move the conduit? There we go. And then we'll set a conduit up here. So this will be uh, extract always active and insert, but this will be insert on brown. This will be extract on brown always active, insert on green. So kind of going back and forth, right? And that'll only pull these. All right, I think we're just about ready to go. Now all we gotta do is configure all the different patterns for everything and hope that uh, we did this correctly. So some of this automation does require a little bit of foresight and you really need to know how these things work. So to be able to make pure Certus Quartz, it does require you going through a little bit of uh, some hurdles. So I need to have a crystal growth chamber in order to make this. this is the only thing that requires it. So it's a little bit of a step here. And you see I have a pattern here that turns Certus Quartz into um, this, which is going to be ground up. So we need to make sure it goes in here. So this is a pulverizing recipe. Then we have an actual crafting recipe that needs to take place. And that's going to go up here inside of our crafting terminal. So this one is going to be taking the seed uh, or making a seed, which is going to be sand and the surface course dust. And then we need to take it over here and, and cause a processing pattern to happen. And that is going to be to actually make uh, or to actually purify the Certus Quartz seed into pure Certus Quartz. Um, and I think that I need a filter for this. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a extraction filter to make sure that it only does this. And I'm going to match metadata and the whitelist. So I think this is by default matching metadata. I think, yeah, I think it's set to matching metadata when I click that. So what should happen is if I put the seed in here, it should stay in here until it's fully grown. Yes, it does look like that's happening. And then once it's fully grown, it will be transferred out, right? We've set this to always active. Hasn't pulled it out yet. And that's set to insert. So things are looking good. All right, now time to set all this up and I'll show you what that looks like after I'm done. So they've actually made this really easy. This used to not be this easy. You weren't, you actually needed the items required in order to place this in here. So now you're able to select this and it automatically goes in, making the recipe making process way easier, meaning you do not have to have the items inside of your internal inventory in order to make this. What a lifesaver. Thank you so much for that. So what I have now is everything that is needed. This is going to be used to make silicon right here. Um, I still need to put the plates in here. This is going to be used to make the gold. This right here. This is going to be used to make or the diamond, and this is going to be used to make the pure certus. Now, everything else goes in here. The actual finished products need to be inserted here. And this is what's going to pump everything out. Um, and right now, I have it going back into this chest, which is not exactly what I want it to do. I actually need this to be a different... I actually need this to be different. That is not going to work now that I look at it. I'm going to end up running into a bit of a snag there. Um, so what I can do is just route this conduit. Let's go ahead and just remove this conduit here. Replace it. This is going to be extract always active. And this will be on green. Insert on green. Extract will be on brown always active. This one, make sure it's always active. And then I'm going to route this around. And I'm going to need some more conduit. And this actually needs to be the big guy. There we go. That way I have something to work with. And yeah, I think we're just about ready to go. I just need one more bit of conduit, which is probably going to require me to craft it. But things are going pretty good. Look at that. So just to finish this up, so if there's people that are actually watching this for a guide, here we go. Uh, make sure this is on brown and on insert and then remove this because you don't need it anymore. And yeah, you have a functioning setup here that should work. So to test, let's go ahead and do this. So applied energistics. Let's go ahead and take out this logic processors here. And I, let's take out everything here. Make sure we do not have any printed silicon either because I want to make sure that works. And let's go ahead and craft this. So let's do the hardest thing to craft 
and I don't think that, let's see, that pulled out, and pure Certus Quartz Crystal. Wait, did that not, is that not inserting? Oh, it's because I never connected it. Oh my goodness. I was about to have a heart attack. So, oh man, I need some more cable. Not too hard to get that though. There we go. Okay, so that should go back in. All right, now we can test. All right, let's do this. Apply to logistics. Let's take all of these that we have and uh, let's go ahead and make some more. Um, so let me make sure I have my pure out and we're gonna craft one of these and hit start. We should see this activate, then this activate. Then we should see this one moving. Oh, you know what? We also need our inscribers because we can't do anything without these. Let's make sure these go in the right machines. Um, this is going to be this one. This is the logic. Um, oh, and we don't have anything pulling these out. I need to hook into a conduit line right here. Oh man, I almost forgot. So to make this really easy, all I have to do is set this to extract on brown, always active. And these should work just fine. Um, and actually this, I don't even need anything there because it's going to automatically do it. But this should work. Right? And go in there and that this just activated a minute ago. I know it looks kind of messy. At least it's symmetrical. And then we should be able to check. And we have it printed. Auto craftable press alt. Oh, okay. So we can press alt to click. Oh, if we have one already installed. Nice. I was wondering what that was to, to do that. Okay, so why did it not finish its craft? So it went here, and it has yet to finish its craft in here. Extract always active on the green. Insert. Locked, can't remove with automation. Unlocked, unlocked. Can be removed with automation. No processes ongoing. Um, process removed automation. So we need that locked. So what I want to check is this chest. Does it have anything in it? It doesn't. So I think the automation failed somewhere and we can check that. I think with this display, we click this right here. No current job active. Okay. So let's, let's try this again. Where is my Huh. I feel like I'm missing something because this is not... Oh, I never put these back in. Oh, I feel like such a derp. Okay. <laughs> this is what you got to go through when you're setting up automation, by the way. All right, so last one. Let's go ahead and finish it up. And we should see that in here. It's going to do this. Then it's going to combine everything in here. Once we see it all happen. There it goes. Now it's cooking it up. And that should throw it back in there. And when this is done, there we go. We have a calculation processor ready to go. Wow. All of that to set up some automation. I know this was like stuff that, um, you know, maybe seems a little bit too advanced for some. Maybe it's too easy for others, uh, but I do like to cover it. This is probably one of the more complicated parts of applied energistics is trying to set up automation systems. And I think it's one of the most fun because you try to set up logistical automation systems, and that's what makes mod in Minecraft, I think, in my opinion, on the tech side, one of the funnest things to do. Um, so this is not the most advanced, this is not the most simplest, but it will get the job done. But guys, I hope to see you in the next episode. If you enjoyed, be sure to click that subscribe button. If you haven't already, also ring the notification bell. I'll see you in the next one, and as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>